This is a basic intro tutorial to paint.net. This is a great little program. It's been around for years and it's a, a step up from if you're familiar with paint that comes with Windows. It's come with Windows for years. Uh, paint is very basic. Two of the big things that paint uh, is missing is transparency and then also it's missing layers so transparency as you can see if you if you grab this and you move it over um, it just brings the whole block of it you can't just grab just the heart and then put it wherever you want so that would be considered transparency and then layers would be this would be a a separate layer of its own um, so like once on here once you hit enter uh, then now you can't re-edit just this one layer because it's an actual part of the picture so so if you're wanting to move up from paint I think paint.net would be a great way to go it's uh, they've been making this program for years it's a uh, freeware so it's free and it also has a great community that has tons of plugins for it and we're going to take a look at that so if you want to get started with it you would go to uh, paint get paint.net and then once you get here then you can click on the download tab and once you go to the download link just scroll down a little bit about halfway in the middle of the page and you'll see where you can uh, download it now it's interesting how they did this it used to just be a free one but they added this other uh, one it's a paid on the Microsoft Store and it's about six or seven bucks it's it's more uh, less of a paid and more of a donation so if you if you got it from the Microsoft Store and paid the seven bucks it they can kind of consider it as a donation or you can get the free one right here and you can donate or you don't have to donate either way you can download it for free right here full working um, piece of software now there are other free applications out there and GIMP which has been around for a long time it's called GIMP it's a more of an advanced type software and then they have a Photoshop which has uh, been around for years it's like the standard um, but for that it's a paid uh, I think they went to a subscription base so you'd have to pay I'm not for sure if it's monthly to use the software or yearly um, but this is free easy to use click on this uh, download it and then uh, install it click next 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 now if you do download it uh, make sure you just download it directly from getpaint.net uh, some places will package it up and put viruses in with it and then uh, when you install it you think you're just installing this but it's installing Trojans and everything else on your computer so again make sure you get it from uh, getpaint.net and go to the download tab and you should be safe from there uh, once you install it you're going to have an icon on your desktop it looks like this this is what the icon looks like and you just double click on that it'll open it up also if you have pictures or photos on your desktop if you don't want to open up paint so what you can do is you can open up paint and then click on file open and then navigate your way to find the pictures like here's some pictures and you can double click on it like that um, but what you can also do is if you want the picture if you just want to be able to double click on it and it open up in paint.net which is uh, a good thing to do what you do is just right click on the picture with the right mouse button and then go down to where it says open with and then choose the uh, program but what you actually want to do is right here click choose another app if you click right here paint.net it's only going to do it for one time the next time you open it it's not it's going to open with the other program so do choose another app and then choose paint.net and right here where it says always use this app to open PNG files you want to check that so that's the key so once you do you'll see it opens up and then if you close it and then double click on it again you'll see it opens with paint.net so you're ready to edit it and ready to go so that's the intro so now let's go ahead and get started let's take a look at paint and what it can offer you so some of the things to notice is layers this is one of the big keys and this is what we talked about the other Windows paint program doesn't have the layers and layers are so easy to work with um, you'll see right down here where it says add new layer you can add as many as you want you can um, use the little X right here to delete them just like that take them out um, so what layers allows you to do and we're gonna go ahead and work with one so you can see is put pictures on top of pictures so let's go ahead and take a look at you have the tools over here now these tools um, are the main things that you're gonna be working with and the other main thing is the color palette so right here is where you're gonna choose your color and then if you wanted to paint you would choose the paint um, so a lot of this stuff does look familiar just like uh, in the paint program so for one of the uh, wonderful 
items that they have on here is called the magic wand. If you click on the magic wand, what it allows you to do is select uh, portions. So you can see right here we're selecting the heart. Now as you can see it didn't select everything. It didn't select this white in here. So all you have to do is go up here to see where it says tolerance and you just want to make the tolerance a little more. And it's what's cool about this is it dynamically does it. So you don't have to click on it again and you can move the tolerance up and down to see how much you're going to grab and at, right there you can see we grabbed the whole balloon so that's that's really great so at this point what we want to do is you can um, at the top up here you can click edit and then you can click copy and that's actually going to make a copy of it um, or you could do edit and then you can cut it and it looks like it went away but it's actually in memory and then we're going to bring it back from memory here in just a minute so what we want to do now though is we want to make another layer so you can kind of see how the layer would work so if we click another layer, now you can see the layers highlighted. So now we're working on that other layer, but uh, it's invisible, right? Because it's transparent. So you really can't see it, and you don't know. The only way that you know that we're working on that other layer is right here because it's highlighted and we're clicked on it. If not, you wouldn't know there's another layer there. So from there, you can click on Edit, and then Paste, and there it is. It's paste. They it just pasted it into the new layer, and you can see it's on top of it. And so you really won't see how it's on top of the other layer now this is the cool part this is how you, the reason layers are so cool now we're going to just press the enter key on the keyboard and now it's uh, inactive so now if we if we move these layers around see how that went behind it so that's the real power in layers and the real power in transparency um, because you've seen on paint where it just copies the background and now these are transparent so they're each individual objects so if you wanted to um, modify this heart again that we just put in in there you would have to click on the layer and then you can move it around um, you can see these resizing tabs right here and then you can resize it however you want you can um, if you come off just a little bit you can see uh, the double-headed arrow that would allow you to turn it left and right rotate it just like that so that's the that's the basics of the uh, layers and the basics of the transparency um, we are going to go into a few more things in this video uh, looking at some more of the tools here but again these are the these are the most powerful features and the one of the main reasons that you'd move up to this application from the free program so now let's take a look at some of the other tools they have uh, these are um, really basic tools one of them is the eraser and once you click the eraser uh, the brush width is is something that you're going to use on all these tools and so let's say we make it bigger and then we can erase it now if we try to erase here you can see nothing happens that's because we don't have that layer selected if we selected that layer with all the little hearts then you can see it goes right through it if you ever make a mistake and you want to get rid of it, you can on the keyboard, uh, the shortcut is Control Z. You hold on the Control key and, and press Z, or you have this little icon right here, the undo. And as you can see, just go right back in time. Now, another of the uh, tools that are, is really great is the texture tool, or the, I'm sorry, the text tool. And this is where you can put text on the screen. A lot of times, what I when I'm placing text I'd like to create a new layer and then put the text on the new layer and that way I can put it behind or move it around so I always try to get in the habit of making a new layer to place text on and so if you put it in there you can see how small it is um, so what you'd want to do is simply change the size of it and then it uses paint.net uses all the same fonts that you have installed in Windows so you'll have all your fonts there if you need to install more fonts you just install the Windows fonts reopen the paint program and you'll see them in there and so you can see our layers kind of hidden behind the other layers and once you have uh, something typed in just press enter and we'll click on our selection tool and then we can move our text around so we're probably going to let's put that in front there we go there's the text easy to put on there and it always stays in, in this layer so then uh, whenever you want you can move it around if you put it in, in with the background then you're going to have to it's going to get uh, stuck in here and then you'd have to copy it out which would be a real pain um, so let's go ahead and hit enter on that let's take a look at so our next tool we have the paint bucket which is a great great tool also especially when you just want to flood in some uh, color so let's 
let's say we wanted to make this heart uh, blue or let's say we wanted to make this text blue we have the layer highlighted so if we click on it it's going to make it blue and then again you can how much you want to text so if you if you zoom in see this kind of transparency on the side uh, depending on how much you do the tolerance see how it takes out the transparency and if you if you zoom out you can kind of see uh, it, it, it may not look as good it kind of takes out the anti aziling um, and it doesn't make it look as uh, soft see how it and the next tool that we can look at is the paintbrush and the paintbrush and the pencil are basically the same thing uh, you go up here you choose your color whatever color that you want to paint with and then you choose the hardness that you want to paint with um, you, you can also choose the anti aisling enabled or the anti aisling disabled and we talked about the anti aisling when we did the paint uh, bucket and we can we can look at that a little more in depth here um, so pretty easy just paint on whatever you want if you make another layer you can paint on that and then move that layer uh, forward and backwards so the anti aisling if you zoom in you can hold down the control key on the keyboard and then use the mouse wheel to zoom in but you can see how it on the edges it kind of feathers it out if you change this to disabled now watch when we do this see how it looks more blocky so most of the time uh, you'd want to keep it on anti azel just gives it a more of a smoother edge look um, and that goes for any any of the tools that you're using uh, even the text so that's the paint brush uh, tool real easy to use just go down here and pick your color and then you can paint you can change the uh, the size of the brush and all right the next tools we're going to look at is the selection tools there's three of them and uh, just like the magic wand which is a great selection tool which we use to select the heart and it got the uh, ribbon also with it uh, so it's, so this is an awesome tool and you can use these also so let's say you wanted to get this heart and what you could do is you could take the um, rectangle and go over here and grab it like this and then from there you could um, do edit and then you can uh, click on cut or do control X so now it's cut into memory and at that point you could if you wanted to you could paste it into a new layer and you see how it creates a new layer and also puts the the heart on there so then you can move the heart around wherever you wanted to so that's another just another way to uh, select something the other way to select something um, and the eclipse would be the same thing except it's round and then the lasso tool is a little different as you click on a point and hold it and then you just move it around like this and as you move it around it makes the selection like that so you can get the selection a little better it's still the lasso tool is actually I think harder to use um, my favorite tool to use is is definitely by far the magic wand but sometimes the rectangle select all right so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close out of this picture and we're gonna open up a new one so we can simply close this and it's gonna ask if it if we want to save changes and we're gonna say don't save changes and it's gonna go away and then at that point we can um, let's grab another picture here and we'll open it up and there's Keani Reeves <laughs> he's gonna be in the matrix 4 coming up so let's go ahead now what we're going to do is we're going to create a see right here we're going to click on new we're going to create a new picture and on here you can maintain aspect ratio or you can put in your uh, width and height so let's put in a 1920 by 1080 and so that would be considered hd uh, and so that's going to give you your height your width i'm sorry and your height so this would be just like uh, a a lot of TV screens now they're 4k which would be a lot higher than this but this would be like the HD TVs um, so click OK and you can see how it's a rectangle and you can zoom in you can see your zoom right here where you're at if you're zooming in and out um, and you can do, zoom in and out uh, you, like I said holding down the control key and then using the middle mouse button and so we have the background and you can see the backgrounds white so if you, you wanted to get rid of the white you could just click on it and then press the delete key and now it's uh, cleared out and at that point if you wanted to you could um, use the paint bucket to fill the background with whatever you want or you can click on the click on it again and delete it so now it has a transparent background all right so let's take a look at the. let's go on with our next tools uh, so at this point we can uh, look at the this would be a good time to look at the picker uh, so this is the color picker so normally you can move this around 
and try to let's say you wanted to get uh, this this green right here you know the exact green well you can move it around but it just might take you a little while to figure out which color it is um, you can also click on more and actually type in the numbers uh, uh, which you normally don't have to do that a lot but there's some cases you might uh, so go ahead and click on the picker and then just get on that green right there and you can see that you can see the color changing right here as you move the picker around and get right on the green you want and there it goes it's it's got it selected so let's say you wanted um, to put a green background so you you just add a new layer and then get your paint bucket and now that you have the the blank layer selected you just paste it on there but as you can see now um, it, the whole thing turned green because it's just because of the order so you just move um, the gentleman in the front Mr. Keani and you have it set up so now let's look at uh, let's look at the clone tool and we're going to take a look at the clone tool here so we'll click on the clone and see what it does so what we're going to do to work with the clone tool is we're going to uh, zoom in a little bit here and what the clone tool is best used for is to get um, get take out things that you may not like in there so, so see this little blemish right here um, and this photo is very low resolution that's the reason it looks pixelated uh, so but if you want to get rid of this how you would how would you use it and if you look down here it'll tell you actually how to use a tool it says hold the control key and plus click to set the anchor point so for for the stamp tool you have to have an anchor point so you hold down the control key and then you click where you want it to uh, to start so as you go over here it's going to be taking these pixels over here and moving them over here see this little dot when you hold down the control key and click and then as you move over here it'll put the pixels over here so uh, as we move it around click right there see that and so a lot of times this is used to kind of uh, brush up or clean up something that that you may not like uh, an imperfection so if you zoom out you can actually still see it I didn't do a very good job but uh, that's the just just of it uh, you would just and you know what it probably did let's undo this let's go back oh, redo and what we'll probably do is just make it a little smaller and the resolution so low it's, it's really kinda hard to do anyway but uh, well, let's do this let's take uh, let's make it a little bigger and what we'll do is we'll click we'll put a third eye right here if, if we can so let's click on the eye and then we'll click where we want it okay we'll zoom out okay there we go so you get the point of it um, you're basically cloning one por uh, portion of the picture to another portion and like I said a lot of times it's used to get blemishes or if you put two items together and, and you want to kind of uh, seam them together you'd use this cloning tool all right let's go let's keep moving on here now our next our next tool is the uh, gradient so see how this background is just uh, green you might want to uh, put a gradient in it which would make it look a little better so we're gonna click on the background and we're actually gonna delete this we still have our green selected over here and we're gonna select our gradient tool now once you select a tool as with the other tools you'll look up here and you have different options for the gradient um, so what we're gonna do is the linear and it's just like the little pic picture shows you'd start in one side and as you move to the right it, it'll um, get lighter and darker so we'll just put our screen right there there we go and that's it that's how the gradient tool works very easy to use um, it's a great tool actually so let's take a look at our final tool and this tool is the shapes tool and if you click on the shapes tool you'll notice up here you have uh, we're, we have the rectangle selected if you click the down arrow you have other like call outs arrows and these these are uh, great to use also um, but for now we'll use the let's go ahead and use the eclipse and we'll we'll make one right out here and you can see it's green the same color so we really can't see it so we're going to uh, press the delete key to delete that well actually we can't so we're going to do the undo because you can see it's not in the same layer it's in the same layer so now it's stuck in there so that's the reason um, one of the reasons that you want to use layers uh, so you can move different things around so this time we're gonna make it black so we can see it better and we'll just drag it out here and so some of the things that take in consideration is the brush width um, 
So you can see it, you can almost make a donut. And another thing that you want to take in consideration is this icon here. This says shape, draw, fill mode. And depending on what you put here is depending on how it's going to look out here. So if you have draw, fill, shape with outline, so it'll, uh, it'll fill the inside of it just like it shows it. And then you can have a different color for the outline. So you can have two different colors for your shape. And since it's on its own layer, like we talked about, you can move it wherever you want and put it in front or behind. So the uh, great, uh, great tool also there for that one. And so let's talk about, uh, let's talk about one thing that's uh, very important here is is the and which what we're, we touched on earlier is the plugin so just like the layers are very important in this program and a great reason to use it and the transparency so are the plugins so the great thing about this it has such a this uh, program the paint.net is it has a, such a, a large community of people who make plugins for this and, and the plugins are are really one of the things that make this program to get the plugins you'd open up the paint.net get paint.net the same place where you downloaded the program and you go to the forum and once you click on the forum you would scroll down and then you would see down here about in the middle it says plugins publishing only you would click on that and then you'd scroll down in here and there's two types you could get you can you can actually look at all the plugins right here and they have them categorized here plugin packs this means they put a bunch of plugins in one pack and then they have file type plugins and these are the actual plugins that you'd put in the folder a lot of, some of these packs will have installers so you download it to your desktop just like you did the paint program you double click on it and it would go and install the pl uh, plugins or you could do it manually and we're going to do it manually just so you can see how it's done so if we look down here they have um you can see they have a bunch of them pinned these are pins you know the ones that are used a lot like for instance they have one in here that um, you can open up PDF files so for instance um, I was working with Sony and they had some PDF templates and I don't have the uh, Photoshop ins installed so I couldn't open up those uh, Photoshop files and so I was able to come in here and, and get a plugin that would allow me to open and manipulate uh, Photoshop files which saved me from having to buy the Photoshop or buy a license for Photoshop. So that's an excellent plugin. It really helped me. Now, here's one called uh, Circle Text, and this is this is a really good one. Now, if you look at it, it is actually a, a pack, and a lot of these people who make these, they'll they'll put down here so you can actually look and see uh, what it's capable of doing before you download it. So in this particular and normally after they kind of show about it and they're all about the same you'll see somewhere they'll have a download link and then when you click on that it'll take you to paint.net you're still on the paint.net site and then you can um, download the zip file uh, and all you do is click on the zip file it's going to download it uh, to your download folder so in here you'll see the download and it's a zip file I think almost all these are zip files and all you do is just click on it and then it'll start downloading and in this particular case, I have it downloaded to the desktop. And, uh, and wherever you're downloaded, you just go find the file. So here's the actual file right here. If you, you can right click on it, um, and then you can do open with and do Windows Explorer. And when you do that, it's going to open up and actually show you the files inside of it. So like I said, this is a pack. So it doesn't, it not only has the uh, text plugin, but it has a bunch of other plugins. So what you do is you, you, you just either get the one you want if you just wanted to circle one, or if you wanted all these other ones, you would grab them too. So on the keyboard, what you could do is hold down the control key and press A for all, and you see how it selects them all. And then you can hold down the control key and with that held down, press C. And that's going to copy them into memory. So then you just have to take those files and put them in your paint.net plugin folder. So the easiest way to get there um, is to right click on the icon. And when you right click on the icon, if you go down to properties at the bottom, at the very bottom, you'll see properties and then it'll bring up this uh, properties of the icon. And then you'd click on open file location. And that that'll take you straight to where the applic where the program is installed on your computer, and then from there, if you scroll to the top, because the folders are usually at the top, you'll see where it says effects, and then from there, you simply just paste in, um, paste in all the files. See the from right here, you can click paste, 
and I'm getting an error message because I've already pasted them in there but you won't it'll just paste them in the file um, if you do you can click replace it's not gonna hurt anything and then uh, click continue to to verify that you want to paste them in there and it'll take just a second I'll paste them on in there now the thing is um, you will have to have the paint program closed in, in order for it to take effect and to, for you to see them and uh, so and this is even telling you right here it says the action cannot be completed because it's open so then you have to close the paint program and then click continue we're going to click cancel because they're already in there um, but that's that's how you do all the plugins you download them uh, to your desktop or to your documents folder you open it you copy the plugin the dll file and then you paste it into the uh, paste it into the folder and again it you just the only thing that you copy in there um, is not the whole you don't copy the whole folder in there you open up the folder and then see where it says dot dll you may not be sh being shown these but it'll look like a little cog um, and those are the actual files that you copy those are the actual deal um, those are the actual plugins okay so let's go ahead and open go back in here and, and see how the plugins work uh, I love the plugins. So we got our clean layer here that we created. And so let's click on the text tool and we're going to put some text in here. We'll make it bigger. And maybe not that big. And then what we'll do is we'll, we're going to make it black and we're going to type in test. And so the way we have it, we have it test. And then we're going to, what we're going to do is put that in the forefront so we can see our text. Now, here, and this, this is what we're talking about the the great thing about the plugin so see this text right here it says test um, on the light part it looks great you can see the uh, see the text but on the darker part you can't so one of the good things to have so you can see it on both is to go up to your effects and then on the effects you'll have um, all the different effect uh, effects that you've downloaded the plugins and so one of that we did was a drop shadow and then if we put it on white uh, now you can see the text even though it's on dark so if you have dark and light colors and you're trying to put text it, this is the best way to do it this one has a blur which is kind of cool and or you can just take the blur out all together and so there you go now you have the text you can see it on the light and you can see it on the dark area so really cool uh, plugin that's available also so if you wanted to see the plugin that we we got you'd go to um, I think it, it's a text formations is where it was under and then we can see the circle one there's one of them you've seen there was quite a, a few of them and they have some other ones the best thing to do with these uh, is is to try them out is it's just uh, uh, try it and see what happens with it and then uh, you, you'll kind of learn best that way uh, so like the the circle tool you just click on it and I, I haven't really used this one um, and I, yeah I'll just test it out and see how it works um, you have radius how, how big the arch is going to be and so we'll we'll just, just click OK and see what it gives us and you can see where it put the text at it actually put the text because we didn't do it in another layer it put the text on top of this one so it's kind of hard to see but you get the gist of it it uh, takes text and it makes round so that's a that's a great plugin the um, shadow tool is a great plugin they have so many it's incredible so again that's where the power lies for the paint.net program awesome program so now that you have you have what you you have see your layers here right here so now that you have your layers in here, let's say you wanted to save this as a project and then work on it later, but you wanted to uh, preserve these layers. What happens is when you click on here, when you click File and then Save, uh, or File and then Save As, it's going to pop up and prompt you. And the default is going to save as a type as a PDN. And, and that... Um, file type is specific to the paint.net program you, you can't open that in any other program so if you save it as that you're not gonna be able to like send that to somebody like a picture or paste it into an email um, because that is just the only thing that that can open with is the paint.net and the, but the cool thing about saving it in that um, file type is it preserves all your layers now let's say you wanted to um, send this to a friend um, 
and one of the best things to use is a JPEG because it uses a great compression algorithm and just about anybody can see it. You can put in an email, you can do just about anything with it. Um, so that's a great thing. If you want to preserve the uh, transparency uh, for certain programs that you're going to bring it into, then you might want to use a, a PNG. Um, but I would say uh, if, if you're new to this and you're just making a picture and you want to send it to somebody, then um, JPEG would be the best choice. You know, you're uploading it to YouTube as a thumbnail. Um, that's what they use JPEG because it, it's a lot smaller size. So. So we have our JPEG, we're going to hit, click Save on there, and it's going to ask you what quality you want. Um, the lower the quality, as you see right here, the file size, the lower the file size, which this is very small anyway, 85 KB. Um, but you can play with that. Uh, as you can see, as you move it down, the file size goes down, but so does the quality. Um, so you can kind of get that. They have a sweet spot right there as a 94. You can do the default. Um, and then at that point, just click OK. And what now, this is where it's going to ask you to flatten all your layers so this is how the program works you can flatten them and now look all your layers are gone which you may not like right but that's okay um, you can always click the undo button it'll put your layers back and then at that point if you wanted to save this to work on it layer later and preserve your layers you just do the uh, save as and then you would choose the paint.net PNG and then you could save that on your desktop and then when you reopened it it would look just like this um, one other thing that uh, this has that's great is the adjustments. So if you choose the, depending on what layer you choose, you can click on adjustment. And then they have an auto adjustment. So I don't know what the deal is with the auto adjustment in this, but it seems like it always it makes it too dark or too light. I, I've, I haven't had really good results with it. Um, but we're going to click the undo button and put it back. The, the best thing that I've found is uh, doing it manually. You can do it with the black and white, but the brightness and contrast is a great a great one to start with. They have other ones um, that I think I've downloaded as a plug-in. And see this, so you can make it look like uh, old-timey, old-fashioned. Um, so we'll cancel on that. But but one of the I think one of my favorites on here is the brightness and contrast. So on here you can if you wanted to bring the brightness down, um, you can bring it a lot brighter, and then almost make it look washed out. Uh, so the I think that this is one of the the best tools there. But this actually looks pretty good as it is. Um, so that's that's the that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, and this this is the real basics of it. This is like the intro to it. Um, but if you have any questions, I would love to hear about them. I'd be more than glad to answer them for you. Uh, the, one one other thing to take take consideration. I've, I've seen people where they're like, uh, so this panel gets lost, um, or this panel. And you're like, how do you get these panels back? Um, so if you go up, up here to these little icons up right here, you'll see where it says color. So it puts that back. And then you'll see this one is the layers, and it puts the layers back. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, I'd like to hear it like if, if you like paint.net, if you've worked in it and you like it, uh, that'd be great to hear about that. And thank you for watching, and hope you have a great day.